Um, he's asking about the OTC, so he's saying, um, will there be a standard OTC rate to make it more transparent? Uh, for example, uh, selling for 5% less than market value and buying for 5% uh, on a discount. So do we have a set percentage that we use or not? We try to keep around 5%. Uh, the problem is, right, an OTC is essentially a private deal between two individuals, right? So it's it's really difficult to arrange OTC deals without having both sides in agreement. So what happens when we have OTC deals is we connect the buyers and the sellers in a private channel and we allow them to negotiate their own rates. And then we honor those rates and perform the escrow service in between the two parties. Uh, excellent. Next question. Um... Old Seafood asks, with the building hype of Hive and the Union of Transparency, is there any anticipation that when Hive launches uh, to prevent liquidity from moving uh, out of floor too quickly? Uh, as I'm guessing some of us are currently uh, parking our funds in LP you know, just for that purpose. Well, look, I mean, there's a lot of node projects that launch all the time. Um, what we do is we allow uh, we, we allow the quality of our own protocol and the way that we've treated this protocol in our community to speak for itself. Um, you know, Hive, uh, Hive is a n super hyped and it's a brand new launch, but that doesn't mean that it's taking away from the long term perspective of Thor. Uh, the great thing about the Union of Transparency is it also acts as a great cross promotional channel. So we're going to be exposing the entire Hive community to Thor and the entire Thor community to Hive. And what we encourage is everyone to participate in ideally both protocols. Um, you know, this is not a zero sum game. This is not, you know, uh, Thor versus Hive. This is not Thor versus the UOT. This is the UOT propping up all of these protocols to get, and collectively. Uh, excellent. He followed that up. He said he was in the Police and Thief game Discord and they mentioned they had some issue on the P2 launch as NFT trades not supporting uh, metadata upgrades uh, for the mm -hmm. NFTs. Mm -hmm. Um, since these NFT P2E games are booming now, will our upcoming marketplace be able to support this so we will have an edge or even a step further of having a P2E game of our own with our nodes, for example? <laughs> well, we're working right now on the metaverse, so we've already secured uh, the the sandbox metaverse uh, the, the land, and we actually have a set of developers working on the uh, game side of it. Um, these developers aren't the same developers that are working on the protocol. We don't want to be robbing resources from one side to the other, so these are a completely different set. Uh, it's people connected in with uh, David Doton, who is our TA expert, who's been providing those great TA videos every single day. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the marketplace is, uh, going to be set up and that's the reason we don't have a definite da a date on the marketplace release. Uh, the marketplace needs to be completely set up and ready to go at launch. Um, so what I'm doing now is, you know, we're simultaneously working on these new contracts, the, the, the ease of life, uh, as well as the new, UI, new UI, uh, we're also starting work on the marketplace side of things and we're allowing, and we're allowing that to take as much time as it's really going to need. Um, because again, this is, a, a, a uh, for um, our perspective, this is a marketplace that we have one chance to uh, release. There's one release date, there's one chance to release, and we need to ensure that we have all of our ducks in a line, we've properly tested, and we're ready to go uh, for when this uh, marketplace releases. Uh, so it's really important for us to make sure that, you know, all of the foundational work has been put in place. Um, but we also simultaneously um, are looking to form out partnerships with high quality utility driven NFTs. Um, ideally, what we want is we want the NFT platform uh, to have a large collection of high quality curated NFTs. So that way our community isn't having to wade through a bunch of mud and a bunch of crap, you know, just pinups and, you know, uh, really crappy looking NFTs that have no utility. Um, we want this to be a marketplace that derives pure and utter value to our community and, uh, and to allow high quality NFT drops to have a nice spotlight with thousands of people to take a look at it. Uh, awesome. Uh, Ruthanius asks, um, in what ways are you working to improve the Discord server? So I presume they're referring to adding channels, adding adding bots, functionality, that kind of thing. Well, I mean, we're constantly trying to improve the Discord server. Um, the Discord server, I mean, over the last couple of weeks has had some major changes, some major renovations, um, you know, and, th and that's something that we're going to continuously evaluate. Uh, we're looking at all the different utilities and value adds that we can add to the server. Um, we certainly would appreciate any feedback and any comments of what you'd like to see on the server. And we'll certainly, uh, we'll, we'll certainly work our butts off to achieve that. Um, you know, we are a really established server at this point. We have hundreds of channels, including the private channels for all the support tickets. 
Um, we have a lot of information here. And what we want to do is we want to make it um, not super confusing for new people to come in. Um, so that's something that we're evaluating in, 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 in on both sides, right? Um, but certainly, if we have some good recommendations for, for, for you know, additional utility or additional value adds to the community to add to the server, we're certainly open to it. Um, you know, we're more than happy to hear about that. Awesome. Uh, Crypto D asks, what happens if sustainability brings in more money than what is needed uh, to pay out the rewards? Is it a possibility? And if so, would it be likely that the rewards um, are increased in response to this happening? Uh, so no, uh, what would happen at that time? So, you know, it, it, it's very possible. And, and, you know, this is my, this is my personal speculation. I just want to say that. Okay. Uh, this is not something that's confirmed by the developers, but I really think once we have that marketplace, um, you know, I think about it like this. If we can take 5% of a million dollars in transactions every couple of days, that's a ginormous revenue stream. And what we can do with that revenue stream is we can constantly push the price of the token up and up and up and up. And we can do very consistent, regular buybacks of very large amounts. So effectively, you have the same reward rates as the same emissions, but your rewards are worth significantly more. That would be the strategy um, for for treasury for revenue streams to outpace uh, uh, the expectations of the uh, of the reward rates uh, the current reward rates. Um, we don't want to be in a position where we increase rewards uh, with with additional revenues uh, and then see those revenues potentially drop and then have to re, re uh, uh, drop the rewards again. Um, what we're trying to do and what we really learned from the messaging um, from when we first announced the reward changes here is we cannot keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we need to. Have have things consistent and reliable for people so people know exactly where things stand exactly where the future is going to be um and that's a lesson that we learned as a mod team and and, and as myself as the community manager um and that's something that we're taking very seriously into the future um so that's that's the reason you can see with the latest announcements we put an entire medium post together for this um we wanted to make it as absolutely transparently clear as humanly possible um and i think that that really helped avoid a lot of confusion and that's the way that we plan on doing uh, uh, bigger announcements in the future as well. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys have a wealth of information to draw upon for any changes, for any announcements. Uh, so that way everyone is informed and there's no confusion. Excellent. Uh, First General asks, how big is the Thor team today and how has the size of the Thor team evolved so far since inception? Uh, how much more hiring will there be uh, done in the next three to six months? Oh, significant. Uh, so, so the Thor team has been growing. Um, it's been growing through both, you know, moderators um, as <clears throat> as well as new people added onto the core team. Um, so, uh, we started off with like four developers, uh, and then I came into the picture here on the community side uh, after launch. Um, but you know, we are at now I think six developers. Um, we're adding on another two developers, uh, front end people as well as uh, UI people. Um, and then also, I mean, this is pretty perfect timing here, Striker. Um, we are adding Striker officially onto the team uh, on the business development side of things. And uh, Striker, if you want to come off mute here and give yourself a little bit of an introduction to the Asgardians, I think that's uh, I think that's the perfect time. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you, brother. Hey, uh, welcome Asgardians. Appreciate to be up on the team. A uh, little bit about myself. I do have some game theory background as a professional poker player. Uh, I was a Joint Special Operations Command um, soldier, held a top secret clearance. Um, I have a lot of connections to the world that are really good for Thor. Um, my uncle happens to be the CFO of a billion dollar company. He's been headhunted to take us, uh, to take other companies uh, public, and he is helping me quite a bit auditing stuff. So we have a lot of things that are in the works, and I look forward to basically helping the team as much as I can. Uh, all the time so appreciate you guys onboarding me we're going to do big things <laughs> so i mean that's just another addition to the team here um now obviously not every addition that we uh we publicly announce um obviously because you know right as soon as we add on someone to the team we have a list of things that they need to get done um so we have active team members being uh working on that's the reason we can work on the new ui that's the reason we can work on the new contracts we can work on the lottery feature all in the simultaneously is because we're consistently expanding out the uh, back end team here to make sure that uh that we make this protocol as as 
as humanly uh, as great as humanly possible and as sustainable as humanly possible um and we're expecting to ramp up the team significantly from here as well uh certainly leading into the marketplace because this is going to take a huge uh a huge undertaking in the development side and we need to ensure that not only can we get it done in a reasonable amount of time but the quality needs to be up there um so you know it, it's uh it's the 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 quality and especially uh you know the functionality behind the marketplace and the visualization behind the marketplace is going to become much more clear as we start to release some more teasers and some more information about where our ui is heading um because we're we've seen some very cool things in the background here uh we're not quite ready to start showing you guys and teasing you guys on on what the new ui is going to look like uh but we're feeling very confident that uh that this is a uh a, a not just like a step in the right direction this is a massive jump in the right direction it's pretty much night and day uh from a ui and functionality perspective of uh where the d apps are going uh, awesome jayla royce cup asks uh, in the event that the thor price went low enough that monthly node fees couldn't be covered uh, by the monthly profits uh, made from your nodes which i'm 100 percent sure is very unlikely uh, in that case would there be a temporary fee reduction to support node owners um, yeah, uh, that's something that, I mean, we certainly don't see that happening. Um, but should something like that happen, we will be adjusting. Um, we're not going to be putting anyone in a position where where they're overpaying and, and they're paying more than their node generates in fees. Uh, that would be absurd and absurdly unfair to uh, to, to our node owners. Um, once again, that's a, that's like a less than 1% chance of happening. Uh, it's a very, very minute uh, a possibility. But should the, God forbid, the worst happen, we will certainly be adjusting to make sure that no one is uh is is out ever awesome uh, el capo asks who is behind this uh, project uh, can we have some links to some real linkedin profiles uh no so uh we've gone through the kyc steps and i understand everyone gets uh clamoring on about uh about doxing and uh all of that um, what I'm going to say here, and I'm, I'm going to make it very clear, uh, doxing itself, uh, what you what you do is I can set up a fake LinkedIn. I could dox to you guys right now saying, hey, my name is John Smith. I'm from California. Um, I'm 46 years old. I have three kids. I am uh, from Beverly Hills. My zip code is 91020 uh, or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, a doxing requires uh, a lot of trust. And it requires, uh, you know, the community to trust that that doc's information is real and not a fake individual. Um, that's the why KYC is actually better, um, because there's no way of faking a KYC. You have to provide your passport. You have to provide your biometrics data. You have to provide uh, utility statements. You have to prove your identity. Um, and those are additional steps that would never happen if somebody was just doxing. Um, so and from my perspective, and, and really, I think once people really learn about KYC, they'll realize that that is actually a much better system of providing investor trust uh, than just a, a docs and here's a here's a potentially fake or real LinkedIn profile. And uh, by the way, the lead developer has gone through KYC. Um, we we share it all the time. It's there on public. It's it's there on Twitter. It's there uh, in the announcements. It's it's all over the place. So you're more than welcome to go check out the KYC information for yourself. Excellent. Uh, Entropy Fighter asks, uh, reading through the Gala documents, it seems like the Thor team will need to keep computers running in order to keep the nodes running, in order to claim mm -hmm. rewards. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we know about the Thor team's capacity to run hardware uh, in cases such as this? Yeah, I mean, we already run significant amount of hardware 24-7 anyway. Uh, we have validator nodes. Every validator node requires a constantly running server. Um, so, you know, I think we've demonstrated the fact that we have zero downtime on our phantom validator nodes, and they've been out for a little while now, zero downtime on our AVAX validator node, and that's been out for a, a few days now. Um, that demonstrates that we have the ability to run both software and hardware. Um, so we're not concerned about the ability of being able to run a Gala node. Um, you know, obviously, right now, the, the daily rewards on a Gala node aren't the best in the world. Um, but that's the reason we're really excited about both price action for the Gala token, uh, as well as the uh, the founders nodes becoming NFTs and tradable. Um, we see a dramatic upside with Gala once those NFTs, uh, once the nodes are tradable, um, because, you know, they have a scarcity element, they have a max node. Um, and we're expecting those nodes to go up significantly in value. Value as Gala continues to provide more utility uh, to their uh, to the metaverse. Awesome, uh, Alec LLC asks: uh, In version two, will we be able to rename uh, our nodes? Uh, if not, can the devs uh, add this feature into the code? 
Uh, that's something that we're looking at. Um, that's that, that's a lower list on the priorities. Um, you know that that's a it's it's more of a surface level thing. Um, you know I'll reach out to the devs and see whether or not that's possible. But right now the priority is making sure that the V two is uh, is at a high quality um, and test it and make sure it works. Um, so from my perspective, that's far more important uh, than uh, than being able to rename your nodes. Um, that's something that we'll certainly look at for the future. But, you know, I, I think we all know where the priorities are. And I think we need to focus on those priorities. Awesome. Uh, Pup27 asks, can we get any data on how many new nodes were purchased uh, due to compounding versus new unique purchases um, into the system? Um, I can request that data. Uh, we've been really heavily working on the new updates, um, but I'm more than happy to request that data. I don't have that data off the top of my head. Awesome. Uh, Michael Wynn asks, with so many new overlapping projects, is there concern that uh, projects cannibalize each other uh, for investors and devs? Uh, should complementary projects within the UOT merge and combine investors, devs, uh, resources and ideas? Um, so no, e e each protocol is an independent protocol and the dev teams on each protocol are completely different. Uh, the value actually, the, the, see the here, here's the thing, right? The, the, the nodes as a service, DeFi as a service space is significantly oversaturated with a bunch of forks and projects being launched every single day. Uh, the only difference between, you know, say a hive and a power to a Thor is the fact that we actually all work in con uh, conducively with each other. Uh, we all work with each other and we all have a relationship with each other. We allow that to have a cross promotion emotional stream um, with each other. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the fact that the UOT exists is actually a dramatic value add to all protocols in, in the UOT. Uh, it's not only just a legitimacy factor, but it's also a clear path of cross promotion and growth. Awesome. Uh, Old Dog asks, with the current node count, uh, monthly fees total approximately two and a half million. Um, and we're told that paying the fees with Thor is not a good idea because the treasury would have to sell them in order to use them, creating sell pressure on token price. Uh, however, it is likely that most node holders will sell Thor uh, rewards for AVAX in order to pay, pay the fees. Um, so what would be the difference between these two? Well, I mean, the difference right there is a staggered approach on how those, uh, on, on, on how those are, uh, how that Thor is sold. Um, everyone, everyone, you know, the beautiful thing about having 30 days is people can claim at different times and, uh, and sell those tokens to pay those no rewards. Um, but I also think we're significantly underguessing the amount of people who are going to be compounding and keeping uh, enough at AVAX in their wallet to cover the rewards with fresh AVAX. Um, so, uh, you know, in a situation where if we took it out of the rewards, 100% of the rewards would have to be sold in order to justify that. Uh, whereas if it's done by the individual, uh, there will certainly be a lot of people, I'm not discounting that, that will be selling their Thor for, uh, for, for their fees. It won't all be happening at the same time. That provides a lot of uh, buying a action to, you know, swallow up any of those dumps. Um, but what also it means that a lot of people have the option and, you know, it's more flexibility and options to individuals uh, to where they can choose to compound. And if they want to compound, obviously, they need to have fresh AVAX in their wallet in order to pay for those fees. Excellent. Uh, LeBlanco asks, uh, hi, Yusuf, I want to know from Loki how Thor Powerhive uh, can be symbiotic and what would be their unique features to distinguish themselves to attract um, and acquire new investors? I believe this would be great to build communities on their own platforms with clear, unique selling points to attract new entrants. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, th I think I've covered this a few times now. Uh, this is all to do with the UOT. All right, the UOT is an or is is a regulatory, self-regulatory organization comprised of these protocols that offers cross-promotional channels. Um, I think it's pretty clear that Power has its own direction that it's going into, uh, especially with their secondary token. That's something that Thor is not doing, which is completely different. Uh, Hive is also completely different from what Th uh, what Thor is doing. These are all completely different uh, different protocols with different objectives. Um, all searching uh, to find that same goal of sustainability. Excellent. There was a note at the end that I left off. He said, um, I like the beard man, 26. Who would have thought uh, you were <laughs> in your doxing video? <laughs> well, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I hope my face lived up uh, for uh, lived up for everybody. I do have to say I have those peasant jeans being short, fat and hairy. And, uh, you know, I think my beard represents yeah, that. Um, ideally, one day I'll be able to have a separation between my chest hair and my beard. That's that's the goal for myself as an individual. <laughs> Awesome. And next question, Charlie A. Crypto asks, um, firstly, can you explain how the transition um, of nodes into NFTs is planned? And then you followed it by saying, uh, will we be able to potentially sell them in the future? Yeah, uh, th th that's the whole point. So, so as, so, you know, 
when we introduce the marketplace, uh, uh, there will be a very clear. Uh, we'll be making an entire guide on how uh, on on how to essentially uh, take your node uh, as an NFT and then uh, put it onto the marketplace to sell or trade. Um, so that's going to happen, but that's going to happen in a significant amount of time from now. Uh, again, the node cap and the nodes becoming NFTs happens in conjunction with the marketplace. It does not happen before, um, and the marketplace is still a significant amount of time out. What we're focusing on are the V two contracts. We're focusing on uh, the lottery. We're focusing on a lot of the utility that we're trying to add to this ecosystem, and then we can really primarily focus on the marketplace. Uh, but that happens after, and uh, you know, I, th there's there's no way of being going to be able to speed that up. Um, the NFTs that will be coming out with these new contracts are a supplemental NFTs that provide a bonus uh, to your pre-existing nodes. Your nodes will not become NFTs until we have uh, the marketplace in place, and that is, uh, you know, at least a couple months out. Awesome. Uh, Jujitsu Jerry asks, um, are there any plans for Thought to become uh, validators on the Polygon network? Uh, we're looking at all different networks. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's it's something that we have to weigh the cost uh, to to the revenue, right? Uh, and there, I, I, I also just to speak on that, I've seen a lot of fud uh, about people going, you know, uh, a, a validator node only produces thirty uh, percent APY. How how the hell can you guys, uh, you know, afford your your uh, your reward rates uh, with such a low APY? Um, and I think what people are dramatically forgetting about at that point is the scale. Um, you know, the scale of 30% on 500,000 phantom tokens, for example, is very, very different from 30% uh, on 5 million phantom tokens. Uh, and that's really where the uh, the economies of scale play into validator nodes. Uh, validator nodes can be a fantastic revenue source. Uh, it's all about having as much phantom delegated to that node as possible. And you can check for yourself. Uh, we're already at a few million phantom being de delegated, and we're expecting that to grow uh, over time here. And as our validator has more and more uptime. A nice one. Uh, Drypto King asks: When the full marketplace is finished and is released. Well, we'll be sticking with the name uh, Thor Nodes as well as the same Twitter handle. I'm just wondering for social media and marketing purposes. Yeah, uh, Thor Nodes is is the name here. Um, what we may do, depending on uh, d depending on how things go here, we might look at making you know another channel for the marketplace and having a marketplace as its own individual subsidiary under Thor. Um, uh, but yeah, Thor uh, Thor Financial is our name. Um, you know, Thor Nodes is the common vernacular behind it. Uh, but Thor Financial is our name, and that's an ecosystem name. Uh, it's a name that's going to encompass not just the marketplace, but other uh, you know metaverse. Uh, other elements that we're looking to add into this ecosystem over time. Uh, excellent. Uh, Be Random uh, asks, um, if nodes cannot be transferred from one wallet to another, uh, does that make them resistant uh, to theft? So, for example, if your wallet is hacked, uh, they can take your tokens, obviously, but not your nodes. Is this correct? And if that is the case, uh, does it make sense to add that as part of their marketing? Um, I mean... I, I don't ever want to make any kind of marketing that's pointed towards people getting hacked, right? Um, what I'd rather do is educate our audience on on how to protect themselves. Uh, you know, this is this is DeFi and it's the Wild West. Uh, there's a lot of nefarious people in this space. And what we need to do is we need to encourage people to learn how to protect their assets uh, more than just rely on a non-transferable asset. Um, having said that, uh, yes, uh, he is right. Um, you know, if your if your wallet gets hacked, very much like strong nodes, uh, they can claim your rewards, but they can't move those nodes. Those nodes are locked to that wallet. Um, so that at least adds a little bit of a, a protectionary measure for yourself. Uh, but a compromised wallet is a compromised wallet. Um, that's something that I think that people just need to get start getting a little bit more um, educated on. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of people who respond to DMs and from bots and from scammers randomly scamming you. Um, we really need to start encouraging people a lot more to think a lot more critically uh, whenever they have, uh, you know, any kind of questions. Uh, if something looks somewhat sketch, don't don't click on the link. Uh, we uh, I'll reiterate again, us on the team, we will never DM you ever. We will never DM you first. You, there's no such thing as wallet validation. There's no such thing as giving us your seed phrases. We'll never ask for that. And nobody from the team will ever DM you first, especially when you first join a server. Um, and that's not unique to Thor. That is for the entire DeFi space. No legitimate team will ever DM you first. No legitimate team will ever give you, um, you know, ask you to go through links or to validate your wallet or from or tell you one a random ass giveaway that nobody talked about. Uh, that stuff doesn't exist, and that's not how any DeFi protocol that has any kind of legitimacy runs. Excellent. Uh, so you followed up with a bonus question. Um, it's regarding uh, the snapshot. So 
uh, sorry, it's regarding the um, the hive wireless. So he said, perhaps um, reward people who put their money and faith into the U uh, into the UAT. Uh, people with verified God mode uh, positions in both thought and power could get whitelisted uh, for no, hive. No. <laughs> no, it's a totally different protocol. I really wish people would stop asking. Um, there's only one way to get whitelist, and that's been very clear. It's been it's to be done on Twitter. The whitelist is a very very limited amount of spa uh, spots, and it's only it's not being given to people um, who have a previous relationship with us. It's giving people who are dedicated to the Hive space. Uh, once again, this is a totally different protocol. Um, this is about Thor. This is not about Hive. Uh, excellent. And then he was asking about the snapshot. So. Uh, for snapshot votes, are the wallets weighted by type of node? And then if not, uh, could someone just set up a couple wallets with 100 handles to have more voting power um, at a relatively minimal expense? Uh, yeah, I mean, the problem is Snapshot has been uh, designed for DAOs, right? So it's it usually goes by the amount of tokens being either staked or held into a wallet. So it's really difficult to, to, to create a situation where it's just for unique nodes. And then that's what we've already done. And then it's even more difficult to make the nodes, each individual tiers valued nodes differently. Um, we're looking into ways to continuously improve our voting system. I mean, you know, I want to reiterate, we're, we're two months old. We started off with a Discord vote, which was just a simple reaction. React vote where everyone had one vote. We've moved on to a snapshot vote, and we're going to be continuously increasing our voting capabilities. Uh, we certainly want to add in waiting, uh, 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 weighted voting, uh, but that's something that's going to have to happen at a later time. Awesome. Uh, Danger D seventy four asks, how much time does it take uh, once you start the OTC process to withdraw your coins to your MM wallet? Um, are there any additional fees for this withdrawal or for using OTC in general? Uh, so there's no, there's no additional fees uh, for using OTC. OTC is very simply you have tokens that you want to sell or you have you have money that you want to buy a, a, a larger amount of tokens with, um, but you don't want to dump on the market and hurt the price. Then we connect you with a private buyer or a private seller. You guys negotiate the exact terms that you agree with. Um, and then we facilitate the deal by providing an escrow service where either side essentially sends me uh, both of their sides of their token or the USDC usually is the other, uh, you know, uh, trading mechanism. Um, and I hold on to both, wait till I have both sides in and, that, and then I disperse it to either side of the uh, of the deal. That's all OTC is in a nutshell. Awesome. Uh, Oxy asks, will there be an option to pay the monthly maintenance fees uh, for the nodes uh, in advance? Yes. We're looking to have like a 90 day uh, where, where you can pay up to 90 days in advance. Uh, there will be some game theory behind that, though. Um, you know, obviously, if you're paying an AVAX for a specific amount, the price of AVAX fluctuates. Um, so it's going to be up to individuals on whether or not they want to pay ahead, uh, thinking AVAX might go down in value or uh, or just pay for that single month, thinking AVAX might go up in value. Um, that's going to be up to the individuals, but you will be able to pay multiple months in, 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 in advance. Um, and I also would just want to say uh, you always will have 30 days to pay out. Uh, uh, your your node fees and you'll also have an additional 30 day grace period on top of that um to where you know the node won't be producing you returns uh during that extra 30 day notice but you won't be losing that node so you effectively have 60 days to pay your node fees um you know the whole point of the node fees is to start clearing out people who you know have already left the ecosystem aren't taking care of their nodes and has no interest in their nodes anymore as awesome. well as of course being a significant revenue stream yeah absolutely uh, Fourier asks, um, is there a marketing budget for Thor and can we expect to see your help uh, with any pushes um, with the launch of V2 being so close? The addition of uh, David Dotan was awesome. Do you have anything else uh, planned to generate excitement? Uh, we have lots of things to be. Uh, uh, we've lots of things in the books here to uh, to to uh, to. I mean, a lot of you know. We're looking at partnerships. We're looking at a few different things to build out excitement and hype. Um, once again, uh, this is a, this is a lesson that I've learned. Um, you know, I revealed the marketplace, the long term marketplace, and node cap early, and uh, it's very clear to me that there's a significant amount of people in this community that I I just don't think can handle having news ahead of time without constantly every single day asking when 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 when. So. So uh, we, I'm going to be a little bit more careful in my words here and essentially say um, we will be announcing that when we're ready to announce that. Excellent. So that was the last of the written questions. Uh, Spryker had some uh, things you just wanted to speak up uh, briefly before we switch over to live questions. Sure. So I'll, I'll go back on mute so he can, he can come sure. up and talk. Hey guys, just a quick rundown. Um, and some of these things, Loki uh, hasn't had a chance to fully audit, so please don't bombard him with questions from things I'm going to say, because he potentially doesn't know. Uh, please do uh, other questions for next week's uh, Thursday. 
Um, but for some of our topics, we have a uh, CERTIC audit pending, uh, and those things will be worked out and potentially coming soon. Um, the Thor team is also structuring out roles for every department within our protocol, so that stuff is getting more efficient. Um, additional KYC for members who it's important to be KYC'd. My full bio is going to be released and docs, so you guys can kind of get more of my background and how I'm hoping to be an integral part here at Thor to, to kind of build trust within the community. And as we try to go out into other communities and work with other businesses who want people like with my background, uh, I will provide that with Thor uh, and, and all the other amazing people we have here. I also will be in attendance at the Tampa uh, Synapse Summit uh, BizDev Conference looking to potentially headhunt uh, developers uh, for Thor. Um, people from Shark Tank will be there and I will be representing Thor. So some alpha there, we're going to be looking to add to our team, as Loki has already said. And uh, somebody did mention the P2E games, and we are currently already working on stuff like that, specifically for um, Thor. And being part of this ecosystem, we're looking at all avenues of potentially whitelisting people who have already invested in us and have been here for a long time and are potentially owed in God mode owners to introduce buy pressure so a little alpha there things like that are, are coming so just know that the more that you are invested in these in Thor, there's going to be more potential for you as we continue you know expanding and doing things that we see that are successful and um you guys just got to believe us we we are transparent we're going to continue being transparent we can't give you every single move we're going to do to protect your interests uh and i'm hoping that with my onboarding and, and everything that loki's done and the trust that we've built you guys continue to trust us. We are going to do right by you. Thank you, guys. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> well, geez. Uh, they, <laughs> all right, Ryan. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, you gave you gave away a couple of alphas there. Uh, you know, everything that you did say, I, I am fully aware of. Um, obviously, I don't want to go into a huge amount of detail. But what we are looking to do is uh, we're looking to get a lot more organized as an individual team. We're looking to start to introduce departments into this Discord, into our community. Uh, so there's very clear people that you can talk to for specific questions. Um, you know, certainly everything can't always fall on my shoulders um and that's really what we're looking to build out here in conjunction with uh with uh, you know the new the new additions that we're adding to this uh ecosystem as a whole um so thank you very much striker uh, i really appreciate uh you know you, you coming in here you gave out some nice alphas i hope everyone appreciates that because i wasn't going to even go into those kind of details today um so i hope everyone enjoys that alpha and uh yeah um that's awesome uh Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to really hearing what happens at that conference that you go to, um, especially as we're trying to headhunt some new development staff uh, to join out to our team and continuously flush out our, our offerings. Um, perfect. So uh, with that note, I'm going to start to take uh, questions here from the audience. Uh, so I'm going to bring up uh, God of Thunder. Uh, I'm not, I can't pronounce your name. Your name is Apex Alex. Go ahead. Um, sorry. Hey, how's it going? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you perfect. Okay, great. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Um, love everything you guys are doing. Um, so my question is uh, regarding the uh, farming, more specifically the Thor and AVAX LP. Um, it seems like there's less of a risk going into that because your coins aren't locked up and the APR in that. Uh, could you just touch base on that and if you guys are going to change that in the future at all? Um, we're not making plans on changing it. We are looking at it. Uh, I mean, you know, it does provide a little bit of sale pressure, but the 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 benefit of the additional liquidity that it's providing to us way far outsees that sale pressure. Um, what we are looking at doing, especially when we have the lottery in place, um, you know, what we want to do is we really want to take the proceeds from that and start to fuel out both the LP and the staking pool and, sing and the single side of staking pool. Uh, so that way we're not looking at any kind of uh, net increased emissions. It was just very clear, especially when the rewards change went into place that we really had to get the LP farm out in order to really increase our liquidity. Otherwise, we would have been seeing a much lower token price. Uh, that's the reason our liquidity is at like 25, 24 million dollars right now. Um, that's the reason, you know, you can see a big $10,000 sale and it brings the price down, you know, 20 cents instead of it bringing down a couple dollars. Uh, that's really important for us uh, just, you know, for long term sustainability. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> we are looking at, you know, potentially, uh, you know, using different revenue streams, especially, you know, the newly stated revenue streams uh, in order to uh, in, in order to, in order to sustain those farms and those pools. Uh, great. Thank you for the answer. And then one quick small follow up question. Um, how is the Thor contract coming for the 14th uh, coming along? 
Coming well. Um, we we are getting things. Uh, we're getting our ducks in a line here. Um, we are waiting. We're, we're trying out a few different things uh, to see whether or not we, people won't need to claim from their Thor prior to, uh, to pr uh, prior to that update hitting live. Um, but of course, uh, we will be putting out an announcement tomorrow, uh, regardless uh, whether or not uh, people can you know let their pending rewards lapse or uh, or if their pending rewards are going to be cut from that reward change. Uh, give out a full guide and give out even more notice than what we gave to the Odins. Um, so that's that's what we're planning on doing, and that we're planning on having a definite answer on that by tomorrow. All right, all right, all right. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> You're welcome, brother. You're welcome. Does that cover you out? I'm going to assume. Gonna assume okay. Yes, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, no worries. I'm going to send you back down to the audience here. Then. All right, uh, Tafo, uh, Tajo, go ahead. Yeah, hello. How you doing? I'm all right, um, buddy. Yeah, I've been listening, long-time listener, too. Um, second time speaker um i've heard all the things you've said um they're, they're quite good um i just wanted to ask uh, the concept of all the concept all the ideas we have don't you think we need to have some form of secrecy because you already know the market is being diluted we are having fox of a, a lot of um tall fox and it probably will want might dilute the the market cap in the future how we want to grow and all that i i think um we should keep some of the new ideas the because you, how am i going to put this now it's, you are the, the founder of the an idea so it's easy for you to regenerate because you've been able to understand assimilate and you can reproduce so creativity is one of the aspects the tour team has I think uh, we should try to consolidate it between maybe a board of trustees. You have the Musuf, the um, Excalibur, yourself, Striker, and some people. Um, with um, Striker having somebody, a CFO, who can actually advise on what to do, so we don't get to sell our ideas to other other other. Um, protocols yeah um i mean that's that, that's that's it's very, like look right now the marketplace is super oversaturated um and you know people point out to you know other node projects that have better price action than us um and you know what they're failing to understand is really the emissions rate um there's a reason why we're at a hundred thousand nodes uh and these other protocols are at tens of thousands of nodes uh they simply are not at the same stage that we're at and as soon as they start reaching the same kind of emissions that we'd be looking at they're going to be facing the same kind of problems um you know it's gonna it's, it's much like december here where where we see a big influx of all these forks coming out most of them are going to fail uh, most of them won't work out um because this is a tremendously difficult industry to operate in this is a brand new concept um and it's something that we've been pioneering and we've proven that you know we can make adjustments and pivots over time um but certainly with the new contracts we are planning on making them not public um of course we're getting them fully audited by certic that's already been voted and established by the community um but uh but you know we aren't looking to make those repos public um really because we want to avoid and make it as difficult for people to fork our new ideas and our new concepts uh make that as hard as possible we're never going to be able to fully stop it but we can put as many hurdles in people's uh, ways as possible and that's exactly what we're planning on doing with these new contracts okay beautiful the second question is are we looking at off-chain investments like uh, getting a bitcoin mining operation so as to add value to our own um, the value to tor Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, we are looking at, well, I mean, a Bitcoin miners on chain technically, um, but we are looking at, uh, we are looking at miners. Um, I, you know, that's the great thing about, uh, I, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but, uh, but, you know, okay, we have, okay, okay, good. no, 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 I want to, I want to give you just, a, just an idea that that's something that we're seriously looking at. Um, we have yeah. actually you know, some really great leads uh, for that as well. Um, you know, David Doton is, uh, it has some other businesses that he operates and uh, most of them in, uh, involve energy production. Um, so when okay. we have access to really cheap energy and cheap land, um, all of a sudden the profitability on miners becomes astronomical. Um, so that's what we're heavily exploring right now. Um, it's still in the explo uh, exploratory phase, um, but it's something that we're certainly open to and that we're looking at very intently. Okay. Um, okay. That's nice. Um, then the third question is, now we already have the um, UOT. 
which means um, I think no that um, Tor is known as a service. I think um, Hive is um, DAF, and um, also Power is similar to Tor. Do do we are we going to are we going to structure it in a way where each of those protocols are focused on one um, kind of project and becomes a giant? Because the, the the plan, the vision should be like Tor should grow to an extent where it can decide to build its own um, chain, his own um, whatever he wants to do in the future. But I think with structure, because yeah, we have great ideas, we have the people, and you have the people who are ready to invest. Let's just break it down to like you have the market, the, you have the finance. You have the human resources, the, all the great guys, and you also have the the operations, which is all the things you've been setting up. So, do we? we sh I think we should. This is my thought. I, we should consolidate each of those UF, UOTs as a business to grow it to a phenomenal level where it can acquire other or be invested in other bigger protocols. Do you think that is? Um, no, uh, th that goes really against what the entire fundamental concept of the, the UOT is. Uh, the UOT is going to be a uh, self-regulatory industry that consists of over 50 different protocols. Uh, and it's going to oh. encompass all protocols uh, within DeFi. So that's everything from yield farming to DEXs to liquidity providers to DAOs um, to really every other offering that exists within the DeFi space. Uh, the whole point of the UOT is to transition the DeFi space into a much more legitimate space uh, and to have essentially a, a group of ethical protocols uh, that all work together to form the future. Um, I'll go over quickly just the main benefits of the UOT. Um, the UOT pre presents a benefit to the investors. Um, where investors like yourself know that you have an ecosystem of high quality um, ethical protocols to invest in um, and you know that you're not going to get rugged or scammed on these protocols. Um, so that's the main benefit to you. The benefit to the protocols within the UOT is essentially a cross-promotional and shared investor pool. Um, so that's nice for both new protocols as well as the pre-existing protocols to have a continued source of growth being done through a th third-party organization uh, that is not strictly just for those individuals protocols. It's essentially the concept of a rising tide lifts all ships. Um, and then, of course, we also look at things like regulatory uh, uh, hurdles. You know, we, we uh, I, I think everybody in DeFi, you know, we all hate the concept of regulations coming in. We all hate the concept of the government coming in and saying, oh, well, this is the way that things need to work now. You know, this is the way that things need to change. Um, but we can hate it all we like. It's something that's going to happen more than likely to our industry. And I think it's really important for the protocols within the union to be in a position that we can actually work with the regulators and help them form regulations that aren't aren't going to be draconian and one-sided. So it's not a bunch of boomers who don't understand DeFi making the rules. It's actually protocols that are within DeFi, the ethical pro protocols within DeFi, uh, helping those rules to be made so it's actually fair. Um, and then, of course, I think we have a huge amount, like we're talking hundreds of millions to, 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 to billions of dollars uh, in institutional investors, pensions, hedge funds, things like that, that are waiting to get into the DeFi space, but don't because it's essentially a wild west. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a situation where they don't know and they, they don't have enough knowledge over the space to choose protocols to enter into that they feel confident they won't get scammed on. Um, so that's what the UOT also represents. And as you can imagine, when we have more institutional investors putting hundreds of millions to billions of dollars into this industry, they're all going to be going to UOT quality pro uh, protocols, which is just going to benefit all the UOT members protocols themselves. That's the positioning and that's the long term vision of the UOT. Very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank okay. you very much. I'm happy I could answer your questions there. All right, I'm gonna have to move yeah. on here. I, I want to make sure we can no get problem. to as many people as possible. But happy I got three of your questions out there, buddy. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I sent you down to the audience. As you said, thank you. My my apologies. I'm a little quick on the gun here today. Um, but I've invited some more people up here. Uh, go ahead, Tara. Hello. Just one second. Gotta put this on speaker on my phone. Sorry okay. about that. No worries. Go ahead. Coming for you good? Yeah, I can hear you. Go, go ahead. Okay, cool. So, um, I've been a part of a project since very early on. I think like day four or five. So, 
I've ridden the highs, I've ridden the lows, and overall I'm phenomenally impressed. However, I am very confused about the recent addition of staking and farming. Um, and I, I'm like seeking clarification and also just wanting to like add my uh, point of view to this as I am a Solidity developer and I have worked with several protocols in the past. Um, looking at this from my perspective, it does feel like we are devaluing the node aspect of the project by allowing the general public to come in and accrue for rewards at a sizable rate. And how do you reconcile that with being a node platform at the beginning? Um, well, I mean, look, the entire function, especially specifically the LP pool, was to increase the liquidity, um, and that was to essentially hedge us against from the, uh, from you know these dumps that we've been seeing, especially from the Odin's and the reward changes. Um, things are definitely going to change, and we're going to be refining out the the, the farming numbers over time. Um, but you know, the entire point here is to provide provide as much utility to the ecosystem as humanly possible. Um, I think most people uh, would much prefer a consistent revenue stream. Um, being given out through a node, uh, especially knowing where the future is going when when you have a node cap and the scarcity element playing on an F on a nodes turning into NFTs, um, I think that presents a much higher long term value to any smarter investor than than the short term gains that you get in an uh, uh, in a staking program. Um, obviously, as the Thor single sided staking, uh, the amount of Thor that's locked into that staking pool increases, uh, the APY will decrease, and it's going to get to a point where it makes far more sense to make a node. Uh, and that's, I think, is going to transition into a fantastic opportunity for people who can maybe not even afford a Heimdall node uh, to, to buy as much Thor as they possibly can on the market that they, that, that they can afford, stake it, and then save up to be able to buy a node. Um, that's that's where I see that going in the long term. Um, but certainly on the uh, on the, uh, the the LP side staking, uh, the Thor AVAX JLP tokens, uh, that carries its own set of risks. That carries in permanent loss, uh, that carries a few different risks, and that carries a wildly fluctuating APY, um, which does not provide nearly as much as consistency as the nodes. So the whole concept here is to continuously expand our, uh, our, our actual native offerings, uh, to expand the utility behind our tokens, and then to adjust things to make sure that uh, our core business, which is of course the nodes, uh, makes the most amount of sense. Um, but at, at having said that, uh, we're still growing nodes at a significant rate here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to be able to cap off the nodes while still maintaining as much utility to our ec ecosystem as possible. So staking plays just one very small element in that. Um, the larger element comes in with the marketplace. Um, but by the way, if, if you're a Solidity developer, uh, reach out because we are right now current looking to expand our team. Okay, awesome. Um, thank you for that uh, breakdown. I... I, I am a Solidity developer. I will reach out. That's awesome. Um, yeah, please DM me. I have one more question following this, and I have uh, two points I would like to add as possible suggestions to the current um, staking implementation. Sure. Um, the, we are a protocol that generates revenue based off of our investments, and we are also a revenue, or we are also a protocol that rewards our nodes through our value accruing asset. Um, I it, through the introduction of the staking of the LP pool, we mm -hmm. I it appears to me in my mind that a more elegant solution might be to pay out the LP pool in a denomination that is not in four, or is potentially a yeah. So uh, using treasury rewards to create an output stream that does not affect the value like that does not affect the four supply um, i totally and, agree i i totally agree and so that's actually the long-term uh picture here that's one of the reasons why we're introducing a new revenue stream uh, as the node maintenance uh we what we want to do is you know the lp was something that was needed much more in the short term um than uh than than you know obviously uh, where it is now right uh you know having the amount of liquidity that we have in our liquidity pools uh, has allowed us to i know we've dumped quite a bit and we've gone down quite a bit but we'd be down uh, significantly more, uh, a lot more than what we are currently are 
star. Um, and that's, that really has to do with the value that the LP provide as provided to the protocol as a whole. Um, we are looking as soon as we can introduce the uh, the maintenance fees in um, to potentially start rewarding in tokens outside of Thor, uh, whether that's stables or AVAX or uh, all of that. So exactly what your point is here is what we're working on in the background and what we're exactly what we're thinking about. And I'm totally in agreement with you. Awesome. That's phenomenal. Um, so last last point of concern from me as an investor um i'm gonna keep this small and i don't i, I don't expect a massive response i just wanted to voice my opinion sure. um with the methodology of going through our certic audit and keeping our code private we are a project that is based on a fork of another project that would not have been possible if we were not following the principles of free and open source software that um blockchain has essentially been born out of and evolved with so mm -hmm. i would like to offer an opinion of hey if there is any ways we can help the community through our code we should do so as opposed to just trying to make the most money um but that's my last point of concern i appreciate being able to speak and ask questions of course, of course, man. It's, look, we wouldn't be transparent if you couldn't be able to voice a contradictory opinion, okay? Uh, we, we, we don't treat people like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I totally see your point. And from an ideological perspective, I generally agree with you. Um, but, you know... I, I, what we have to do is we have to look at the current market conditions and we already see so many projects that are uh, forking off of us and, you know, of our current contracts, which are, you know, our contracts were a fork that we has become essentially a spoon at this point. We've added so much to them. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a situation where we're kind of, it's, it's kind of a damned if you do damned if you don't situation. Um, what we want to do is we want to put hurdles, uh, especially for malicious actors uh, to be able to fork our code and potentially scam our community um, with, you know, stupid high rewards and then have the entire protocol blow up um it's something that you know we we're we're it's kind of an internal battle for us um because you know we want to live by that of course you know open transparent uh you know all of our code is here but we also want to make sure that we're protecting the entire space and we're not going to create another situation like what we saw in late late december um, so, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a catch 22. Um, that I think is a real value of the UOT. Um, you know, the UOT will have access to the Thor contracts, uh, because we know that the protocols that are going to be within that UOT are high quality protocols. And though, uh, and the UOT protocols, especially when the UOT launches, won't just be my protocols, the protocols that I'm attached to, uh, it'll be protocols that we see for, uh, you know, as I said, I want to scale it up to about 50 protocols. Uh, we currently have 13 protocols that, that have all asked to apply. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my announcements in both the uh, PXT and the uh, R&D servers. Uh, they are very, very interested. They want to join. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of interest by ethical protocols. And what we want to do is we want to build a, uh, a ecosystem of ethics based on ethics. And then, of course, be super open and transparent with those protocols uh, while omitting uh, potential uh, malicious actors the ability just to easily simply fork our, uh, fork our stuff and uh, take advantage of people. That's really important. And I think that, in my mind, is the way that we're going to be walking that tightrope. Um, but there's without a question, from an ideological perspective, I, I think you're totally right. Um, it's just it's it's something that, you know, we need to adjust with the market conditions and we need to adjust with the overall market. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's probably the fairest way of doing it. Um, but, you know, certainly reach out to Stryker. Uh, uh, let's get in the conversation um, because, you know, we're, we want to expand our team, not, not only expand our team, but we want to work with people with who has, a, you know, extensive experience within this industry. And it certainly sounds like you know what you're talking about. So uh, I'd like to talk with you potentially a little bit more in private uh, to, uh, to, you know, make sure that, you know, we are living up to everything that we've promised. All right. Sounds awesome, man. I am currently in communication with Striker, and I'll be around. So have a good one. Fantastic, Tara. Good to talk to you, brother. All right. Um, Apex Alex, do you want to go ahead? I can't hear you, Apex. Uh, you probably have a mic issue. Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, I'm going to move on over here to uh, breathtaking. And uh, while he's asking his question, if you can try to figure out your mic, I want to make sure we can get to you. Go ahead, breathtaking. Got to come off mute there, breathtaking. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm all right. How are you doing, brother? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. And uh, 
Uh, I'm grateful for the time that you're taking, and I will apologize in advance for the the basic um, selfish question here. As I watched the Odin um, transpire at the change of of rewards, um, I did notice that there was requirements to to cash out um, a rewards. Uh, I think I heard you say, and I just want to clarify that you'll be uh, presenting answers to that, whether that will happen with the people that have Thor nodes tomorrow. Did I catch that correctly? You caught that exactly correctly. Um, so right now the de uh, developers, I mean, you know, as we did a lot of testing and we try to make it so that didn't have to happen for the Odins. Uh, we couldn't get that done in time for the Odins. We don't think uh, that, that we're going to be able to get it done for the Thors either. Um, but what we want to do is we want to provide is put as much work into that as possible, as humanly possible. Um, so that's the reason I'm delaying and I'm saying that we're going to be making a formal announcement one way or the other tomorrow. All right. And at that, at that point, then, um, if... If we are asked to basically cash out our rewards at that point, will the quality of life um, capacity be enabled so that we can then, for those of us who want to be involved with our longer time, go ahead and, and purchase another node? Or will we be just um, taking the rewards, uh, paying the tax, and then holding them until the quality of life does come on board? Um, I couldn't tell you unequivocally here. Um, we are aiming for that. I can't make any promises, though. Okay, but you you are you are inferring that that we'll have those answers tomorrow. Yes. Uh, well, I, I I don't know about the quality of life. I'm still like this is something that's being actively worked on as we're speaking now. Um, so you know it's 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 impossible for me to tell you uh, until the work is you know it darn near completion here. Um, but but certainly on the question of whether or not you're going to need to claim ahead of time, uh, for for your Thor, um, we will be making that formal announcement tomorrow, and we'll be giving that a, as a firm indication for everybody. And it's actually going to be a lot more notice than than what we gave the Odins. Um, simply because we're looking at this from a much more ahead of a time uh, ahead of time perspective all right thank you very much appreciate it no worries brother all right uh oh i, I the other guy left all right uh david go ahead gotta come off mute there david All right, well, while we're waiting for David, um, I'm going to go back to the people who have their hands up. Uh, Hi, Monk Panda, Jules, uh, Monferno, and Nav. Hello. Oh, there we go, David. I can hear you now. Hey, what's up, man? I, I want to apologize. I actually uh, accidentally clicked accept. I was working. I was trying to kick myself out, but I didn't know how to do it. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you right back down to the audience if you want, brother. Yeah. No, no worries. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, no worries. I just appreciate it. Okay, sorry, I just already kicked him out. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to kick you out there ahead of time. Um, all right. Um, Mifundo, go ahead. Hey, Loki. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to ask my question. For sure. Um, I just wanted to find out in terms of um, nodes, um, uh, node fees that aren't paid. You, you said that uh, you get a 60 day grace period sort of well you have 30 node. days to pay your node fee and then a, an additional 30 day grace period uh so you know while that first 30 days for you to pay your node fee you're earning rewards every day um but if you pass over that 30 day period then you're not earning rewards but your node does not disappear uh it only disappears if you don't pay after that 60 days in total yeah yeah so what i wanted to find out is once you've lost your your node where does it go does it go to the marketplace that will be built or does the protocol own it and you can just buy it the same way we've been buying nodes all uh, along? It'll go to the protocol and the protocol will more than likely delete it. Oh, so on top of the node cap, you'd be burning uh, nodes, essentially? Yeah, yeah. As, as essentially creating a deflationary pressure. Oh, wow, that's, that's awesome. Thanks for... Uh, answering my question, man. Oh, you're very welcome, brother. Thank you very much. Is, uh, does that cover you up? Yeah, that's that's all. Perfect. I'm gonna move on here to Nav. Then go ahead, Nav. I check. Hey, I can hear you. My man, Colin. Good to see you, buddy, <laughs> with the beard and all, man. Shit, you're breaking in and out. You finally have the face of the name. Yeah. Man, all right, dude. So, um, just got one for you, man. Um, 
maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. So help me with my mindset on this, bro. So with the new clean taxes, right? So they're going to be flat. So for example, with the Odin tier, right? We're looking at 10% across the board. Concern I had was there's no incentive potentially for them to hold it long term. And is there any type of perhaps game plan there to have like a tier system? So this way there's an incentive to hold long term um, instead of a flat tax or what are your thoughts? Sure. We are absolutely looking at different incentives. Um, so you know, we had a lot of uh, a lot of people complaining about the complexity with the ROT days, right? And we had a lot of people who did not com uh, did not understand it and claimed at the wrong times and got hit with crazy taxes. Um, so what we originally uh, did here is is we introduced the flat tax just to make it simple for everybody. We're working on uh, things in the background to help the incentives, uh, incentives to hold and new utilities to use those rewards with. Um, so we want people to you know simultaneously be able to cash out and uh, and take profits uh, but we also want people to have more uses for their reward tokens um, and allow that to act as the incentive uh, in incentivization me uh, mechanism rather than a arbitrary uh, tapering down in the taxes over a specific hold time um, of course uh, and, and this is what we said before um, you know we're watching it very closely um, and this is something that we are open to changing if need be um, but you know uh, I, I want to reiterate uh, if we were to make any kind of changes it wouldn't be like how we announced the reward changes uh, originally that was a i, I, I want to own up to that just again uh that was a, a real crappy piece of communication on my part um and I, I i fully blame myself for that confusion that the community went through and that was really unfair and genuinely i'm i'm sorry and i've learned a lot from that um so uh so you know any changes that would happen would be happening uh you know primarily through community vote as a recommendation um and then uh then we would be announcing any formal cha formal changes as due to that vote um but from our priority and from our perspective, what we want to do is we want to increase the utility of your rewards uh, rather than limit on what you can do with your rewards. Oh, man. And shout out to you for holding it down on Twitter lately with a couple of folks uh, doing what they're doing. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I see you, bro. Appreciate you, man. So that's all I had, bro. Thank you, Yusuf. Appreciate you as always. Striker, welcome. And uh, yeah, till next week. Thanks. Thanks, man. All right, thank you, Nav. Always, always great to talk to you, my friend. Um, I'll send you back down here to the audience, and I'm gonna move on to uh, Selbiz. Hi, Loki. Hey. Um, I just got two questions. Um, one is, um, you said that you're gonna release the live feature. The live feature where you could use the live feature where you could use your own uh, tokens to top up more. Oh, ease of feature. More. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you think you could give a rough uh, times when I be released? So I, I was just asked about that, and so so I, I just everybody else who has their hands up, please please try not to ask the same question. Um, you know, I, I I just for my own sanity, I can't keep answering the same questions over and over again. This is something that's being worked on right now as we're speaking. I can't speak to when it's going to be released um, because I'm not going to be putting uh, additional pressures on the developers uh, to hit an arbor arbitrary time that I make up in my head when I'm not the one who's doing the developments. Um, what I can tell you is I'm going to keep you posted and we're working on that right now as we speak. And as soon as it's ready, as soon as it's been tested and works, we'll be uh, releasing it out. Sure, no problem. Uh, the second question is, uh, do you know when the website's going to be updated? Uh, so that is something that we'll be putting on teasers relatively soon. We have a lot of work that's been done on the UI, a lot of work that we've been looking at internally and discussing internally and working with UI designers on. Um, we're getting very close to finalizing some uh, some overarching brand concepts here. Um, and once we have those brand con uh, concepts figured uh, completely finalized, we will be releasing out teasers as well as expected timeline for rollout. Okay, thank you. All right, man. Thank you very much. All right, pseudo, pseudo judo, go ahead. Hi, Loki, can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfect. Nice one, buddy. Okay, nice one to speak to you, uh, nice to speak to you again. Good to speak to you too, so, man. Go ahead. Um, I've, got, I've got a few questions for you here, so we'll try and keep it rel uh, relatively quick fire. Um, so, like, obviously, is the goal of the NFT marketplace to provide the majority of sustainability? Yes. 
Yeah, uh, okay. uh, uh, it, that is the primary revenue stream. Uh, it, you know, we're going to have, of course, the treasury uh, uh, returns being a mass, massive re revenue stream, as well as the maintenance fees being a massive re revenue stream. But realistically, and you can just take like take a look at uh, you know t take a look at like an active marketplace that does you know say two million dollars in transactions over the course of you know a three day period, and then imagine five percent on all of those transactions. That's a ginormous revenue stream going directly to the treasury and directly to investments. Yeah, uh huh, hundred percent. Um, so, like, my calculations are kind of showing we'd want like a, you know, we're paying out like a hundred. Say we're paying out a hundred k tokens per day. Um, you know, you're looking at like a volume flow of something like five million Thor per day um, at like a two percent transaction fee. Um, that that kind of just seems a little bit high. Um, so then that leads into kind of my second question. So are we considering the marketplace could be like could be cross chain or is it going to be solely AVAX? Uh, it could be cross chain. We're exploring a few different options. Once again, the marketplace is still a while way, uh, while, a while out. Yeah, um, of course. We're exploring I, I understand. a few different things. Um, but if you look at average marketplace costs, it's not 2%. It's, uh, it's significantly higher than that. And what we mm. want to do is we want to have a very high end curated marketplace. And that's going to, of course, come with a premium. Um, and it's going to be a premium that, uh, that uh, you know, NFT pl platforms are going to be more than happy to pay uh, to have access to our dedicated large audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100%. Um, and I have um, posted a comment that's got into the top ideas, which is surrounding this. Um, you know, so I would highly recommend like a cross chain marketplace, but obviously that's that's up to the devs. Um, so will we be looking mostly at uh, utility NFTs or will we also be looking at just basic art stuff? Um, we, we are certainly going to be doing a strong focus on utility based NFTs. Um, I'm not a huge fan of just the clip art that you see out there. I think that's a bubble and I think that bubble is going to burst and I want our marketplace to be, um, you know, active in doing transactions regardless of the current market conditions within the NFT space. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, we're no, there's no question if we're talking about high quality, like one of one kind of art pieces uh, from from NFT artists, we're more than happy to uh, to, to to look at listing those as well. Um, but yeah. realistically, it's it's a real quality element that we're looking at uh, for for real. It's 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 all about quality. We want to have a curated list of high quality NFTs for people to buy. Uh, we don't want to just have a bunch of crap on the marketplace that people have to weed through. <laughs> of course, man, hundred um, percent. So I'm nearly there. Sorry for taking up so much time. Um, okay. So I know we're saying like the node cap will be in conjunction with the marketplace. Um, are we obviously going to ramp into the node cap once we can see the sustainability from the marketplace? Uh, yes and no. Um, what we want is we want them both to be effectively happening at the same time. Um, so that allows us to uh, have a full control over the amount of emissions that the protocol pays out on a daily basis, right as the marketplace launches, and then we can gauge the, uh, the, the revenue rates from the marketplace. It probably won't happen the same day, but it's going to be happening uh, pretty much in conjunction with each other. Okay, so there's obviously quite a bit of rev like uh, interest built up from NFTs to launch that will oh, yeah. ramp up in quick. So we're yeah. not draining rewards too quick. Okay. We're, we're yeah. looking to launch yeah, a full catalog uh, of, of, yeah. of, of, of NFT drops. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so obviously you're looking to step back as a um, community manager. Um, is that something where you think you might be around till the marketplace launch? Oh, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I, I'm not sure where, where, where this concerns and, and these concerns. I've seen other people talk about it, so it's not just you. Um, but no, uh, I'm, I'm going, like, when we're talking about me taking a step back, we're talking about me taking a step back from being in chat 24 hours a day. Yeah, um, I, that's I what we're talking that. about. Yeah, I'm not leaving as being the community manager. Um, what, uh, what what the mods will do is they will start to take over the chat a hell of a lot more than I have. Um, mm -hmm. And I will be here, of course, to do announcements. I will be here uh, in the background always. And, you know, I'm, I'm always around. I'm not planning on leaving this project anytime. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's good. That's good news for everyone. Um, you know, maybe you could even have like a bit of a, you know, succession of power where Striker can come up and do some AMAs once like every so often so you can get a bit of a break and stuff like that. Sure. I mean, uh, I, I'd be more interested in actually doing uh, supplemental AMAs, right? So we could have AMAs mm -hmm. with specifically the gods as an additional value add to the gods. Uh, there's a few different ideas that we're mulling around. But uh, I mean, look, um, it, it, as my role transitions more into the background, um, that doesn't mean that I'm going anywhere. And that doesn't mean that I don't exist. Um, so you'll still see me in chat and you'll still see me doing announcements and you'll still see me doing the, AM, uh, the AMAs. Um, that's not going to be changing anytime soon. Yeah, nice one. I just think that's important for the health of the protocol, obviously, as, 
you're kind of been represented as the face of the project. Um, yes. I think that's just going to help investor confidence stay high. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, thanks for taking the time to answer my questions. No problem, brother. No problem. Great questions as always, my friend. Yeah, nice one, man. Hopefully speak to you again soon. All right, brother. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Perfect. Um, app. Oh, God. Uh, app Paul. Go, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like you're having mic issues. Can't hear you. Uh, so I'm going to move on to Crazy J, and we'll come back to you. I'll have cook. Go ahead, Crazy J. Hey, Loki. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. So quick question. Along with the quality of life updates, um, do you see it being possible to use pending rewards in order to pay maintenance fees uh, instead of having to withdraw those rewards? No, uh, because uh, then, uh, as uh, as said, like before, we'd be in a situation where the protocol would have to consistently sell Thor on the market and provide downward sell pressure. Okay. Uh, the, okay. The, point of, uh, the point of the maintenance fees allows the treasury to grow independent of uh, any kind of pressure being done on the Thor price. Okay. Okay. No, that was my that was one of my only questions. Oh, okay. I got you there. Answered real easy. Then, do you have another one for me, or is that uh, does that do no? That? that that is all. Thank you. Beautiful. All right, Crazy Jay, always good to talk to you. Uh, uh, Paul, have you figured out? Still can't hear you, my friend. I'm going to have to move on to Crypto Dave. Go ahead. There we go. Hey. Hey. Hey, what's up, my brother? How are you? I'm all right, brother. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm uh, 62225. Uh, first time call, long time listener. Love, <laughs> love everything that's going on. Right on. So, you, you you mentioned a couple of times about you know that the marketplace is you know getting uh, I mean it's coming soon but it's kind of far off. So I would have loved to have gotten to this project you know sooner than I did, but I know you can't give exact dates. But would you say we're a couple of months away, six months away? Do you have like any any timeline? I'd say I, I look the the timeline that I'm going to give you now is a hundred percent speculation and up in the air. I want to make that abundantly clear to everybody, okay? Um, but we're looking at more than likely a couple months. A couple months, okay. All right, perfect. And then, um, will you be announcing, you know, um, more more projects in the um, UOT in the future? Like, how's that going to work? Yeah, uh, UOT projects will be going through a formal application pro process. Uh, we will be making that process very, very clear. We're, we have an entire rubric. I, I have an entire team in the background working on the UOT. Um, it's something that obviously me as one individual, I can't do everything. Um, so what I've been doing is uh, over the last couple of weeks is I've been really building out a team behind me, um, not just for Thor, not just for Hive, but for the UOT as well, uh, just to allow me to be able to uh, you know keep up with all of my responsibilities and all my protocols without having any one of my projects suffer. Um, so the UOT is going to be releasing closer in March, uh, probably mid-March, to uh, potentially even late March. Um, and at that point, we'll be taking on applications and I'll have formal people people who are going to be servicing those applications uh, due to the rubric that I've set. Perfect. And just one more question about Hive. You mentioned there will be a whitelist. After that whitelist is, is announced, like how soon will everyone else be able to get in? Uh, whitelist is essentially just going to be able to buy the tokens a little bit early, and then they're going to be able to swap their, uh, their, their tokens over for the real tokens on launch day. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Very, it's very limited, and trust me, I'm going to say this just to everybody who keeps asking about whitelist. It ain't as good as you think it is. Uh, you're not going to see a 10x on launch day. All right, we're we're launching with literally millions of dollars in liquidity for Hive. Um, you know, we're we're expecting to have very stable prices the entire time. Um, so you know, again, uh, you know, I know everyone wants the whitelist. It's fantastic marketing. It's fantastic hype. Um, but don't put too much weight into the whitelist. If you don't get whitelist, that mean does not mean that you're missing out on a 10x. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. No problem, Dave. Take care. You too. Hey, Loki, can you put on Do Not Disturb on your profile? It'll mute your notifications. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Can everyone hear my notifi uh, My notifications have been going off like crazy. I just went on Do Not Disturb. Uh, sorry, everybody. I, I didn't realize that my mic was picking up all those notifications. Um, now you know what it's like <laughs> for me on a daily basis. That's what my computer sounds like. Ba bing, ba bing, ba bing, ba bing. Um, so that's the reason it takes me a little bit to be able to answer everyone's DMs. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. So go ahead, Arvin. Hey, Luki, can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> big fan, big fan. Uh, great job on the Twitter. Uh, people are shading the project. I, um, I think it doesn't work to talk with them. Everyone knows, look at your action. I don't know why they are doing that, but they are fighting. I don't like it. I try to convince him that he's in the wrong side, but he doesn't want to listen. Sometimes people don't want to listen. This is the rea- reality. It I have is one qu- is. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I have one question and one suggestion. The question I have here is, Everyone is excited about the hype and the new project, and at the same time, we are talking about the utility of Tor token. Can you or can we do something, the dev do something that invest in the other project with the Tor token? Then, because I know lots of people, they are saving Tor tokens to sell it to invest in the hive investment, and it will add lots of sell pressure to the protocol. Um, no, uh, w- w- once again, uh, this is to- two ter- completely different protocols, uh, two completely different concepts, uh, two completely different models, um, two completely different sets of goals, uh, and they're not going to be connected. Oh, I see, I see. And the suggestion I have here, sometimes take a day off. <laughs> the, the project, the work is I'm always there. Take a, day off. take a day off, chill, and enjoy. It's, it's a lot of pressure on you. We all see that. Oh, it's it's a huge it's a huge amount it's a huge amount and uh, you know I I, I I I do I do get to places where I feel like I'm breaking down and I, I do yeah. get to places where I feel like I'm burning out. Um, you know that's also the reason why we are increasing the team that we have. Uh, we're increasing the the moderation team and we're giving the moderation team more responsibilities. Um, that's to take a lot of pressure off of my shoulders as an individual. Um, yeah. That doesn't mean that I'm leaving. That doesn't mean that I'm giving up or anything like that. That just means that I, I you know I need to also start paying attention to my own health and my own yeah. mental health um and uh yeah i i do plan on taking some time off uh you know as, as soon as you know it's it's feasible yeah take some time take some time off then don't pay attention to the fathers and uh, they, they are always there they they, they try to they, they are very toxic this I, environment yeah. is very toxic yeah we will get you uh, and shout out to yusuf and before i go down i love the the profile picture of a striker i'm in that game too great job guys Awesome. Thank you so much, Arvin. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother. Uh, I'm going to move on here to Shackleford. Go ahead. Uh, hey, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I know you hate getting asked when questions. This isn't really one. I mean, I work in software development, so I know how annoying it is. But um, when the node cap is announced, it's probably going to cause significant buying pressure. Um, I know you guys have talked about both the NFT marketplace and the NFT nodes. I was just curious if we could have like a, maybe even a rough timeline on either like a node cap amount or whether the time frame of it being announced. So I, as I've said here, the marketplace, we're looking at about two months out and we're looking to do a conjunction node cap with the marketplace. So, oh, okay. Okay. I must have missed that. I stepped away for a minute. Okay. Thank you. No worries, brother. No worries. Did that cover you up? Yeah. Just that. Beautiful. All right. Uh, tech, go ahead. Um, hey there, Colin. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're all right, mate. Uh, this is not really a question. It's more a statement. I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. It's more an apology, to be fair, more than anything. I saw your Twitter post about receiving uh, death threats and stuff like that, and I've come to reflect upon it, probably my own Twitter discourse, and I've certainly realised something, and just how easy it is for even a joke statement to spiral out of control and then somebody on the receiving end of that could uh you know have some weird person sending them weird messages so apologies you know like i i've not said anything specifically to you but i i i just think it's pretty terrible the way that you've been treated in general and seeing that statement honestly like i, I don't know you personally but um seeing the fact that you're getting death threats for just doing your job it's it's absolutely terrible, mate. So I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. And uh, apology for me on behalf of everything, really. And I know I've certainly come to reflect upon my own personal activities and make sure, you know, that uh, this stuff isn't reflected across in that, though. And the second point, um, I just want to say um, with Ox Striker, um, I actually got to speak to him via another group um, and he wasn't treated too well either. And, you know, we've become really (laughs) jokingly uh, friends and stuff like that though and he's probably one of the nicest people ever to have been added to your team and i think with the additions that you have now you're going to go 10 times further than where you are so yeah uh thank you for that just keep doing what you do mate and uh 
you'll get there in the end. So yeah, well done, mate. Well, thank you so much for those kind words, and I, I 100% agree with you on your opinion on Stryker, actually. Stryker and I have been talking in the DMs for a very long time now. Um, we've gotten a very good feel for each other, and and, and I, you know, I, without a question, I know exactly what kind of value he's going to be bringing to this protocol, and that's why I'm so excited for him to be added to the team. Um, as for the death threat side, um, I really appreciate that self-awareness. Uh, that's really that's really cool to see someone reflect, on, and maybe, maybe what they've said in the past has had a significant negative effect on another person. Um, I really appreciate that empathy and I really appreciate that. Um, I will say, uh, you know, knock on wood, since I've done the face reveal and since I've done the partial docs, I have not received a death threat. Um, so, you know, I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm inviting them. Please don't send me death threats. You will get banned and I will block you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm hoping now that people can put a face in the name, people aren't going to be quite as malicious with uh, price action that clearly I can't control, and I'm really doing everything I humanly can to help out. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. And, you know, um, I've, I've certainly seen it, and I, I think it sort of hit home when when I saw the post, and I was like, oh, bloody hell. And then you, then you start reflecting on even the tiniest of things that you might have said yourself in the part, well, my, I myself might have said, in the past, not specifically directed at yourself, and think, hang on, could this have led to a snowball effect that's ultimately led to the situation uh, where we are in? And it had been bugging me for the last few days, and I thought, you know what, next time he uh, has an AMA, I'm going to put my hand up. I'm going to say sorry either way, oh. because I, I, it's, it's, not, look, it's not pleasant, right? I mean, I mean we're, we're separated by an ocean. I'm in England. You probably can't tell uh, from my silly accent, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, it had to be said because I had to get it off my chest. I, I don't like things hanging over me, especially when somebody else is, you know, w whether it's upset or angry. I, 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 I guess I, I don't like seeing someone on the receiving end of a thread, no matter, sorry, thread, a threat, no matter uh, how far away they are. So, you know, um, I hope. Things get all right, and you know, shout out to Ox and Corvette and everyone else. You know, good people, and like, I'm going to back myself out of this because I, you know, I've said everything I needed to say, and you know, I I don't want you to be up here like five hours answering the same stuff over and over again. So I will politely and respectfully bow out. But uh, thank you once again, my friend, and uh, yeah, you take care, well. buddy. You're very welcome, and honestly, I, that, that's kind of made my day just to hear that. I, I really appreciate that, and that, look, this is, this is how we change the culture, and if, I, if I'm the guy who has to get punched a few times in order to do that, then, you know, it's still a righteous cause, and it, 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 it achieves the net result that we need to achieve for this, for this entire culture. Uh, thanks so much, Tech. I'm going to send you back down to the audience, but uh, really thank you for your words, man. Uh, Josh, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right, buddy. Um, so really appreciate everything that you, uh, that you're doing in the community and, and, and love it. I'm very happy with Thor, been with, uh, been in almost since the beginning. Um, but I just had a question that, um, I know I apologize because I know this was touched on earlier in the AMA and I, I, I came in at five, five o'clock and 30 seconds. So unless I missed, you know, the exact answer to my question in those first 30 seconds, um, uh, it's still a question that I have. Um, so I, I have a bunch of Thor nodes that I have, um, some of which are in one wallet. That's my, my own. And mm -hmm. I share, I share a wallet with a friend of mine and we have a few together there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in the wallet that I have with this friend of mine, I have a few of my own Thor nodes and I want to, I want to compound those Thor nodes, but I want to compound them in my personal wallet. So I want to kind of, I want to basically, I want to claim the, the, the rewards from my uh, shared wallet, move them over to my personal wallet and create the nodes there. Um, now, what I'm getting at is basically, um, from what I understood, um, before the most recent change in structure and all that, um, it was my understanding that there would be, you know, an ROT, ROT the ROT period. And at mm -hmm. the end of the ROT period, the, the claim tax would be dropped to 1% um, and then reset. Um, so I know that happened with the Odin nodes, but it doesn't seem, or I haven't heard that it's happened yet, you know, with the, with the Thor nodes that were created on or before January 1st. Um, so I just wanted to ask about that. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, look, we've had to we've had to pivot here, uh, and, and we've had to we had to introduce this new uh, new new reward rate in order for us to even survive. 
Um, so yeah, no, you know, I'm not I'm not complaining yeah. at all about no, that. No, no, no. I, I get you. I get you. What, what what I'm saying is, uh, you know, by tomorrow we will be having a, a formalized announcement out uh, with exactly the steps and procedures, and uh, you know, you won't be facing that twenty percent tax. Um, you know. Oh, uh, okay. On, on that claim day um we will be making that very clear uh same way that we did it for the odins um but we're actually doing it for more notice for the uh thors uh because we're able to actually find this find the answer to this uh whether or not it's possible to keep the re pending rewards how they are um you know past that okay very cool i All appreciate right. it thank you so much thanks josh appreciate it uh, do that great work all right thanks man all right uh 213lb go ahead Hello guys. Can, hey man. Can you hear me when? I can hear you. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so Loki, I, I saw I saw your picture and GG bro, it was you were super cool actually. So thank you for that. Um, actually, I have a question regarding no uh, cap. Maybe <laughs> you asked it before. I don't think so, but I would ask it. Um, actually, uh, how it it's gonna be working actually? So you will be capped um, by category or by number of uh, total of number nodes of we have. Uh, Actually, so when we announce the node cap, it's going to be, hey, this is the last no the, this the, this number here is the last number of nodes that are ever going to be created. Okay, so in, it's in total. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's it for me, guys. Cool. All right. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Uh, quick and easy. There we go. Um, Ozman, go ahead. Hey guys, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, so I had a quick question about, uh, as you said, that uh, the tornos might become transferable or sellable via NFTs. Um, so I, I was thinking, is that a good idea? Because at that point, you know, the, like strong, right? You cannot sell your nodes. You, you invested and you have them for life, right? For the protocol life, for your life, whatever, right? Uh, you can transfer and, and that oh, makes the price. Cool. That hey, makes the price. Can you go on mute, please? Sorry, so, so sorry. I was yeah. getting some back there from Apex. Go ahead. And basically, that makes the price more, more stable because you cannot you know, sell your nodes. Uh, do you yeah. think we, we would have a no, problem like because, that? Because, because we're introducing a node cap. So you're actually going to see the value of your node increase over time, and it's going to be up to you on whether or not you want to trade it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But that node cap, you know, conjunction with the marketplace. You, you still are going to have thousands of thousands of nodes, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, you know, people, the price goes down or whatnot. People will say, "Oh, I just want to get rid of it and I'll, you know dump on the market." Pretty, pretty well, much, right? They're not dumping because the nodes, the nodes aren't Thor, right? So they can't dump the Thor on the market. They can't dump the nodes okay. on the market. They can okay. list their node for sale, and there has to be an end buyer to buy that node. Okay. So the market's going to figure out the price by itself, and more than likely, it's going to be appreciating in value because of the scarcity. Okay. Okay. May makes sense. All right. Got it. Um, and uh, there was a gentleman talking about, uh, you know, audience that we had to um, claim. You, you, you had to claim, but you didn't have to actually sell them, right? The, the only thing you have to do is claim them. Is that yes. true? Yes. There's no reason to sell. I mean, you can sell them if you want. That's that's a personal decision. But but they just we we just told you to claim so they're not in the pending reward, so they wouldn't be cut by the same reward cut that hit yesterday. That's right. Okay, and the same is for the next tiers as well. Um, and we will be announcing. We're we're still working on some things in the background. We'll be having a formalized announcement tomorrow. Okay, great. Looking forward to it. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, brother. All right, uh, Prad, go ahead. Colin, what's hey. up, my man? <laughs> uh, to preference, uh, just real quick, my name here is not the same as it is in social media. And having to deal with some of the things that you've been dealing with, I'm actually really good friends with someone that you've had some contention with. So uh, in the DMs, I've been like, yo, you need to chill. Um, I've also gotten tons of death threats. I've worked for some AAA uh, gaming publishers. 
pretty much oh, in my life. Oh, okay, I can, right. I can, so, I can, like yeah. one day, yeah. I got like nineteen thousand death threats. So, and that's a, a legitimate number. Um, so, I definitely understand. I appreciate that you that you did go over and you know do the semi docs. Um, you know, and and hell of a beard. Um, <laughs> when, 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 it, when it comes to um, just just quick questions, I want to just barrel them out and not take up any more time. Sure. I know that everybody's been talking about node cap, node cap, node cap. Um, how are we going to look at combating it per wallet as you can make another wallet and then just continue to increase your nodes? Um, is there any... Anything that we're doing to kind of look at that, maybe KYC wise or anything like that? No, um, um, and, and okay. I mean, you know, it's uh, right now we're still at the growth stage, right? So it's it's right. not bad for new nodes to be created, and having a new wallet means they have to buy a new Thor in order to make those nodes in that new wallet. Um, from the protocols perspective, there's no difference between uh, Johnny and Jimmy uh, being two different wallets, and Johnny having two different wallets himself. Right. Um, okay. But, but, but when, when we're talking a node cap, we're talking about that there there will be no more nodes available to be made after a specific date. Okay, so it's not going to be specifically per wallet. It's nope. going to be for the whole is, of the nodes. For okay, all the nodes. okay, that makes a lot more sense. I apologize for, <laughs> for my uneducation on that. Um, when so, next question is obviously we're looking at bringing in a ton of money, not only with inside the maintenance, but going over and putting up uh, a marketplace. Mm -hmm. Investments are going to be happening so that we can increase the sustainability of what we're doing and having those as a whole. Mm -hmm. With transparency and what we're doing, are we going to have, as we're a budding community and we're all here for transparency, are there going to be breakdowns not only on the investments, but what we're putting in for the internal teams, for marketing, um, et cetera? <laughs> Yeah, um, we want to get a, a revised tokenomics article out um, because, I mean, the tokenomics was built on the pre-existing 10 Thor for a token. And obviously, uh -huh. you know, that's changed significantly as we introduce the new tiers. Um, right. But without a question. Um, but the cool thing is, uh, even until we have, you know, our D app that's updated with graphs and has uh, has all the investments listed as well as the current P&Ls and all of that, you can uh -huh. view, view it for yourself. Uh, that's a beautiful thing about transparency. It does create, it take a little bit extra work, uh, but really simply... Uh, uh, all of our investments are in the investment channel with the TXs. So you can see the exact dates and the wallet is listed with D-Bank. So you can check up on the wallet, uh, the treasury wallet yourself. Right. Obviously, that's the investment part of it. But I'm talking about there. there's there's multiple areas of investment, right? So we're investing into the protocol itself so that we gain more sustainability. We're also looking at investing into personnel, right? So that's a that's a specific amount that's being pulled out. Is there going to be breakdowns of that? Like how many developers we have? This is how much we're not specifically paying an individual, but this is what our costs are for justification breakdown. This is uh, how yeah, much we're I, paying I've, for marketing. I've, yeah, I, I have no problem doing that. And and that's something that I, I that, that I'd want to be included in the new UI. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I don't have a definite answer for that. I don't have it. We've been really focused on just providing that utility and oh, right. no. the utility of the protocol. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for, for transparency sake, I, that's something that I think would be a very, you know, a distinct value to add to the protocol as well. Um, right. so that's something that I'll certainly be talking about with the developers uh, to include that in the new UI updates. Yeah. I, and again, I'm not saying, hey, employee one, employee two, employee three are getting paid this amount of money, but this is our development budget. This yep. is our, you know, graphics budget. I totally budget. understand you. Yeah. Yeah. No, like yeah. Here, here, here are the, here are the costs of the business. I got right. That. Exactly. Yep. Just to yep, break yep, yep. Yep. I totally and, understand you. I, we're definitely on the same page there, brother. Do we have a marketing budget as it is right now? Uh, we do. We, okay. we, we do. It's 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 in line with the original tokenomics that was listed. Um, so yeah. it's 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 you know it, that marketing budget is used for you know marketing, but it's also used for development. It's used for uh, you know payroll for everything. It's used for you know paying out uh, the new UI. All of that is being included. But uh, there's no question. I'd like to include that in the new UI for transparency's sake. All right. I'm not going to take up any more time. Love you, brother. Keep doing it. <laughs> Keep trucking on. Sorry with the shit that's going over in Canada. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Right. Ciao, ciao. All right, Apex, you're back up here. Go ahead. <laughs> it took me long enough. I uh, I lost my position and then I had to wait about an hour. You guys okay? Yeah, yeah. Go go ahead, man. We, we, we can hear you now. How's the ankle? Uh, it's hurting. <laughs> I'm in a lot of pain right now, but I'm I'm working through it. Totally it's all good. Either. 
Yeah, it's all um, good. I've got a few questions, if that's okay. Um, yep. So, for, for, for Tor investors, um, how can you ensure, and this, this is only because I've been on Twitter a lot lately, and, and I'm fully invested in Thor, not so much into Hive. I know, obviously, Hive hasn't come out yet, but there's a lot of hype about Hive. I am involved in uh, Project X, but because of your involvement, I'm I'm into Thor because of you and, and, and the way you kind of put yourself out there. So that question for me is how can you ensure that you're not diluting your time to Hive and Power and not so much Thor? Now, I might have the wrong end of the stick here because you might not be too much involved in those projects, but just because of the... Um, uh, the Well, yeah, sorry, I'll let you know. I'm having, I, I'll, I have an answer for that. Uh, by having a robust team around me that allows me to take more of an overview and managerial aspect of, uh, of, of my involvement in the UOT, Hive, and pa uh, Power, and Thor. Um, but, I mean, as you can see, I've been part of uh, VPND. I've been part of Power since day one to then launching, and you can obviously see my priority has always been Thor. So sure. that's not changing anytime soon. Um, as I as I said here at the beginning of the AMA with another question, um, I'm going to be putting you know definitely more of a back end, uh, you know back uh, back involvement. Um, I I can't continue. Um, really, it's not even for my own time sake. It's for my own mental health sake. Participating in chat every single day, multiple times a day. I mean, I'm sure everyone in chat can realize when I'm getting frustrated and when I'm when I'm starting to lose my mind in chat. Um, and that's just not sustainable for myself as an individual long term. Um, yeah. So that's the reason I've been building out a fantastic moderation team and a, and a fantastic set of mods here. We're expanding the team out here and this is going to allow me to take more of an overview perspective over all of the protocols that I'm involved with, including the UOT. Okay. The, these questions are in priority of the most important to the least important. Uh, sorry, sorry, no, no. The least important first to the most important. So that's the least important. Uh, next important question is, uh, so... Can you expand on the metaverse and the God knows inclusion uh, status, please? I know you, you give yeah. us snippets, and you may not yeah. be able to give that, but I'm just curious about that because it was kind of a cool um, thing that you put out recently. Yeah, well, I'm I'm actually very excited about it. So this is something that uh, I've worked with in conjunction with David Doton, our uh, our, uh, our TA guy. Um, so we have an entire dedicated team. What we've done is I've gone in with David. Uh, we both personally per purchased a uh, plot of land in the sandbox metaverse. Um, and what we're doing is we're building out an exclusive God Mode only hangout zone. Um, so everybody who has God Mode is going to receive a proprietary NFT. That proprietary NFT is going to act as your access pass into the uh, into the God Mode, um, you know, Metaverse hangout. And that's going to be a hangout that's just exclusively for God Mode people, just as an extra value added. Um, and I just want to reiterate that the cost for this uh, is not coming from the protocol. This is something that I'm individually uh, fronting as uh, as well as David. Uh, it might be something that we monetize in the future it may not be um i'm less concerned about the monetization aspect of it i just wanted to have a new tangible value uh to give it be given out to god mode owners that's such a cool answer thank you um would so you know the tax on thor in general can the would there be a potential where the tax could be paid in avax or any other kind of t uh, avax based currency Hmm. Does it have to be in Thor? It, it's, I mean, the, the the tax is designed to be in Thor, um, but that's something that uh, I can talk to the to to the team about. Uh, it, it's not something that I'm necessarily against. There may be something I'm missing on the tokenomics side of things uh, that you know, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Uh, but you know, I, I'm not against that kind of idea. Um, that's something yeah. that we'll have to come back to though about. It's it's more about the calculations. I think sometimes when when I'm working stuff out. Um, next question is. How do you personally, given that you are the um, the main the main man, say um, for Thor, prevent burnout? What do um, you do to prevent burnout? It's because it's, it's, it's really it's a concern of mine. Figuring like, out. It's something. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm still figuring out. Uh, I don't have perfect. Um, I work uh, a really ridiculous amount of hours in a day. Oh. Um, and since this protocol is launched, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen any friends. I barely see my family. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't have much of a life outside of this. Um, and that's something that I'm going to be changing relatively soon. Um, I just I have an immense amount of dedication to this protocol and to this community. Yeah. Um, and it's really difficult for me to take a step back and not feel like I'm letting people down um and that's just my own individual 
um, you know, personality. Sure. And, and, and that's something that I'm trying to work ahead of. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, that, it, it also comes in conjunction with me being able to take more of a step back and having a moderation team that's going to really start handling the, the daily, uh, you know, chat uh, goings on. Um, so I don't feel 100% obligated to always be in chat and be able to answer people. Um, you know, it's, it's something that is definitely not sustainable. I've been doing it for two months straight. And, um, you know, I'm feeling it in my health. I'm feeling it in my mental health. Um, yeah. So it's something that I that definitely needs to change. That doesn't mean that I'm less dedicated. That doesn't mean that I'm less involved in the protocol. That just means I'm not going to be nearly as involved in the daily chat as as, as before. Colin, honestly, I, I feel like I can call you Colin because we're pals, right? Yeah, no, you can call me Colin. <laughs> but, but honestly, I, 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 I think I can speak on behalf of the whole community. And I'd be surprised if anyone was to the... Um, contrary to this, but no one wants to see you burnt out. I think everyone loves what you do, your active engagement, your uh, ability to quell problematic negativity in most instances, um, you know, the AMAs and everything you do and the, the long hours. Honestly, I've said this a lot of times in, in, in the, uh, for, in the uh, Discord groups and stuff. I just want you to... to, to be as um, as active as, as as the length of the potential of this project, in t- and and you're not going to be able to do that and sustain the amount of hours you put in. So yeah. what you said before was that um, you you know taking letting some of the other guys take some of the groundswell of uh, similar questions that just keeps keep on coming up time and time again. I don't think you need to always be the one answering all of these questions. So I think that's definitely the right step forward and, and definitely something that that for me and and and. The majority of pre- uh, people will, will appreciate. So definitely, uh, I hope you're taking your whole, your own mental um, wellness in, in, intact. So thanks for that answer. Thanks, man. Um, and yeah, I look. It, it, uh, I wish this was something. Honestly, I was better at because um, I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm one of those individuals where I have a very hard time um taking a step back especially when i feel committed to something i feel like i have to give it a hundred percent and every minute i'm not doing it i feel like i'm letting yeah. people down um and that's a that, that's something that i'm trying to to you know trying just to train myself mentally um obviously with the other organizations i'm involved with it's it's becoming you know uh, uh, to, to the point where i need to really learn a proper work-life balance um and uh, and i'm getting slightly better at that i'm sure you guys can notice i've been less active in the chat than i was day one yeah. um but uh, but you know that's going to have to continuously slide, um, and I'm going to have to come more and more into the background. And that's the beautiful thing about the fact that we have such a fantastic moderation team now. Um, we have really good people here that are that are able to answer the same kind of questions that I have to answer every single day. Um, and there's more of them than there are of me. Uh, so it, it becomes less and less involved, all on my shoulders. And uh, and you know, for my own mental health, that's uh, it, that's something that I'm really starting to prioritize here. Sure. And I think the last thing that I, I just want to say uh, is n- not more of a question, more of a statement is about like, I think everyone wants to always know what's coming next. Give us the next little snippet. Let me know what, what, what like is going to, you know, excite the endorphins and blah, blah. But actually you've got to think about, you know, Apple and these big companies, they never release what's coming next. You know, it, it, there's a seat. It's secrecy because... The development, the R and D team are quiet in the background, working on stuff that's going to be the next thing that develops the project, or, or you know, the the community. And 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 I respect that, and I'm sure everyone else does. But I think sometimes it's so easy for people to go, "Oh, it's quiet, nothing's happening." Therefore, the project's dead, and then FUD follows. <laughs> so, um, again, don't um, don't get yourself disheartened when when that starts happening. I just think it, it's difficult for people in the general community to understand that quietness doesn't mean nothing's happening. It means that probably something is happening and therefore don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, look, it's, it, it, it it's, it is what it is. Uh, it, it's a lot to do with the culture of, of DeFi and crypto as a whole. You know, it's, it's a really fast yeah. moving culture and people, uh, you know, have an attention span of a, of, of a great, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, 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 it it is what it is. Um, but, uh, you know, it, one thing I, I personally regret is I personally regret even mentioning the marketplace in the, uh, in the node cap because that's just been something that people won't stop uh, talking about, even though it's something that's in the, in, in the horizon. Um, when I mentioned it, I wanted to make it clear that we had future, uh, you know, a long-term plan here in place and, and a way that we think that we're going to be able to reach true sustainability. Um, and that kind of bit me in the butt um, from being that honest and that transparent with the community. Sure. And that's the reason I'm being a little bit more cagey about the, the, the future developments that we have um we're just going to announce them when they're ready 
Perfect. Well, thanks very much for doing what you do, guys. Okay, and um, peace out, brother. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Greco, go ahead, and I'm going to take uh, literally two more questions here after Greco, um, just because you know we're closing in here on two hours, it's been an hour and forty five minutes. Um, so I'm going to be bringing in, uh, inviting a couple more people up here, and then uh, I'm sorry to the rest of the people if I can't get to your question today. Go hey, ahead, buddy. Hey, great. Hi, doing? doing great, buddy. You feeling better? You're resting? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I, I sprained my ankle today. Uh, so I'm, 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 in, I'm in quite a bit of pain. <laughs> I sprained my ankle walking to my bathroom. I, nice. I, I had my foot was asleep and, uh, and I just took a step up and I took a major spill and my, my ankle's on fire. So as soon as oh, we're done buddy. with the CMA, I'm going to be treating that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, we're, we're doing all right. <laughs> I hope it gets better, buddy. I have uh, one uh, short question. It's kind of a tough one, but I just didn't make sense. Um, let's say I get to a hypothetical point of where I don't need more nodes. Like I'm perfectly fine with uh, the amount of money I'm, I'm making right now. Mm -hmm. Within the claim tax, now that there's uh, a flat claim tax, there's no incentive for me for keeping my own claim tax. Like I can just claim hourly and I don't really care about anything. Uh, I like as an investor, of course, that's great. But as someone who truly believes on the protocol and wants it to be sustainable, wouldn't we want to do something about that? Um, well, yes, uh, that's something that we're looking at. And uh, this is something that we covered on a little bit. Uh, the priority for us is to provide more and more utility to use your tokens and not just sell them. So, so we've already introduced a few aspects of the utility, um, and we're yep. going to be introducing more and more utilities as time goes on. Um, but certainly, if we see a situation where uh, where, where where that's still not enough incentive uh, for people to to not just dump on the market, uh, then then you know we're going to have to face a situation where uh, where where we make a you know a, a change, uh, and that change would be. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, instead of it just going, hey, this is the change that's coming up on this day, uh, we go, hey, this is the situation we're looking at. Uh, let's put it to a community vote, uh, allow the community to vote, and then make a change based on the community votes. All right. Yeah, because I was I was thinking about the marketplace and all, all the stuff that's coming, staking and lottery and whatever. Uh, perhaps do like, a, I mean, just throwing stuff in the air, like another tier where you haven't claimed to MetaMask, but they're outside of node rewards, and those are the ones that you can use within the platform. And then have like a heavier tax on actually claiming for sale or trading. I yeah, don't know. There, there, uh, there, there's a there, uh, there's a lot of concepts that we're mulling around in the background here. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, additional things that we're looking to offer. Um, you know, to uh, you know, speak to the utility of the of the protocol and the ecosystem. All right, love it, buddy. That was my only concern. And uh, uh, make sure to sleep, please. <laughs> thanks, thanks, man. I you know it's 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 difficult sometimes, but uh, you I, know. It, 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 it is what it is. And I'm, uh, you know, as I say, trying to get more of a step back here, uh, just for my own mental health. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're doing that, buddy. Have a good one. And thank you for everything. Thank you, Greco. I appreciate it, brother. All right. Uh, finishing off here. I don't see Larry in the, I, I would have brought up Larry, um, but I don't see him with his hand up here. Um, so Larry one, uh, I hope you're listening and I, I hope you're doing well. Um, but, uh, I am going to be finishing. I'm sorry. I hate NYC. Um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, make sure you ask your question here to Ahmad. I'm going to be finishing up here with, uh, Con uh, Kong Zayo. Go ahead. Get a cough mute. Loki, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Beautiful. Hi buddy. How are you today? I'm all right. Good, good. I just want to give a shout out to the community. Great community. Uh, the team is amazing because they're doing a great job. Um, I don't actually have a question. I have a, I have a statement. I'm just going to say that you guys were looking, if you're ever looking for investment off of the protocols and off the crypto world into real world investment, there are projects within Canada where 100% uh, of the investment comes back within the end of the project and then uh, continuous generating money. Um, it's low. Uh, it's called low income housing. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of that. I'm, uh, I'm familiar. I, you're familiar with it. Okay, so yep. that that's one of the best projects out there. Uh, I've dealt with it before. Uh, if you guys need help with that, I'm willing to give you uh, time to help you out. You have me till about April, end of April, and then I'm leaving actually Canada. So okay. if you guys have any uh, any questions or anything like that, I don't know how you're going to reach me. My DM is actually shut down um, because you guys asked us to. 
So I've actually turned it off. Um, Let's so start. That's good. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I come from a property management background in Canada uh, prior okay. to getting crypto uh, full time. So, uh, so I'm I'm actually very familiar with exactly what you're talking about. Um, right. And you know, there are regulatory uh, issues there. There are regulatory hurdles. Uh, being this is a, pro a decentralized protocol, not existing within Canada. Um, right. So there are issues that we need to sort out first. Um, but that's something that we're looking into in a longer term perspective. Oh, okay. Um, there. There's ways to deal with many issues, right? Um, yep. I, I, I don't know which, which issues you're going through, um, but I can actually assist in a lot of ways from like banks that will give you uh, loans based off of your crypto to, uh, to organizations that would work with you. So across the board, I have, I have connections uh, to, to do all of that stuff. If you ever go into that route, of course, I know Sweet. your plate is ridiculously full. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, 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 this is something that's that's probably better to be talking about in private. Um, so, okay. uh, you know, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I, I know your DMs are turned off. Um, when the time is right, I'll at you. Um, we'll add each other as friends, and then that way we can still DM. Uh, even Perfect. though your DMs are turned off for uh, non, uh, another people. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I'll, uh, here, I'm going to bring up your profile. I'm going to add you as a friend right now. I just sent you a, a friend request. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. There we go. Thanks Beautiful. so much, brother. Um, and, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, perfect. I am going to move you back to the audience. I'm going to take one more person here just because I want to finish this off here with a question. Um, so, uh, Magna, uh, oh, you already have an invite. Um, so if you want to accept that, go ahead. Otherwise I'm going to move over to Olaf. Go ahead. All right, so if you're not going to accept, I need you to accept the request if you want to be the final question here. We're going to do one more. Here is SA333. Go ahead, SA. I've just sent you a request. Make sure you accept it and come on up on stage. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello? Hi, I can hear you. Go ahead. I don't think he can hear me. Uh, all right. Then I'm gonna, oh, uh, can you hear me? All right. I'm going to move on uh, here. I'll bring up uh, Jess the Great. Go ahead, Jess. Come on. Accept the invite. Come on up. I right, also just sent an invite here to Legend. I want to just finish off this AMA with one more question here. I'm I'm sorry, everybody. Bear with me for just a second. Uh, Legend, uh, you have your invite. There you go, Legend. Uh, go ahead. Hey, hey how you doing, guy? Uh, lucky. Hey, hey. Your uh, final question here on this AMA. Well, that's the thing. I don't know. If you want to skip me for next week because I don't have a question. I just want to congratulate you for all the hard work that you and the team are being putting. And I know I'm I've been only for less than three weeks. But I see all the hard work that you guys put, everyone, and to see a community like that is just, it's crazy. You know, I really, I'm a pro holder. That's all I can tell you. I know well, you guys are saying I know well, but I don't consider that myself. I just want to be there with you guys because I believe in passive income. And I, I, I so guys. appreciate I so appreciate that, brother. We really try our damnedest here. Um, you know that that's the thing that separates us from all the other protocols out there is yep. is, is we go the extra mile always for our community. Um, and we understand that our community is really everything. Um, you know the protocol does not exist without a proper community and a community that's respected and and it, you know is not a toxic place for other people. Uh, so just stay positive, stay good. Um, and you know we're gonna get through this negative price action and we're gonna come back on the other side even stronger. Um, you know I'm. I'm I'm fully confident in that myself. Um, you know, I, I we, we got a lot of good stuff in the horizon here. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all going to make it. Um, if oh, it's okay yeah, with yeah. you, I'm just going to send you down to the audience because yep. I just want to finish you. here with a question. Welcome to Boy Striker. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, brother. Oh, yeah. uh, Jesse the Great, come on off mute. And, uh, please say you got a question for me. <laughs> come off mute there, Jesse. All right. Uh, well, then I'm going to send an invite here to Larry 2, which is uh, not Larry. Um, but go ahead, Larry 2. Finish this off. You also have to come off mute, my friend. Oh, I think you might be ser server muted. No? OK. 
Okay. Uh, if you can't come off mute there, I'm going to have to move over here to Kilios as our final question. All right. Jeez, this is uh, really hard to find our last question here, guys. Uh, all right, CC. Sent you an invite, CC. There we go, CC. Go ahead. Hey. Hello? Oh. Hi, yeah, I can hear you. Come off mute. I need to, like, put my... Headphones on hard in a second. Just one moment. Is that better? Yep, that's good. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. On staking, would it be better to have um, the individuals who wants to stake lock in their contract, let's say, for example, 30 days? Uh, it's something that we're looking into. We want to give people as much flexibility as possible. But if it, uh, you know, if, if we do start to see that is uh, really negatively affecting the protocol, we will uh, we will be introducing a staking period uh, and a lockup. Um, but that's something that you know, once again, would be uh, you know com uh, communicated with way ahead of time. Thank you. Um, is there more room for another question? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, finish this off here. Thank you. The last AMA you were talking about, oh, we're talking about here too, um, for the treasury to be invested off the platform. And um, mostly we're talking about um, real estate um, from the last question that we had. Is there any other avenues you're thinking about instead of just real estate for the treasury to be invested on? Several avenues off chain, um, but I, I'll be going into more detail uh, if we can make sure the regulatory issues are dealt with and you know it's something that's actually feasible. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No problem, Cece. All right. Well, I mean, we finished out with some questions there. So luckily, we got a, a couple last questions in place there. Sorry to the people I couldn't get to today. I, I can't always do four hour AMAs um, for my own mental health and my own, you know, you know everything. Um, but uh, thank you, everyone for coming out. Uh, Mods, do you want to say anything here to, 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 to finish it out? Yeah, I can I can say a few things. Um, uh, we added a few things if you if you guys have already seen in our in our Discord channels, uh, one of the cool things we added was the AMA questions. Uh, we added a feature there where if you um, if the, each question has six or more upvotes, it gets automatically um, sent to a special category where Loki and everyone else can address it during the next AMA. And so if you have any questions that one of you guys want to address in, on the next AMA, uh, put it there and then we'll vote on it. Uh, also, uh, general ideas. It works for general ideas and treasury investments too. Uh, what else? Uh, You're a bot master. Say that again. You're a bot master, my friend. I really appreciate <laughs> it. You know, Aaron's the guy out here that's doing all these, you know, massive quality of life improvements with the bots. Um, you know, not just you know the the reply bots that we have and stuff like that, but but also in addition, uh, you know, he's really worked out the private ticketing system. He's worked out uh, the new voting system for you know treasury questions, for AMA questions, for general questions. Um, and yeah, as he was saying, uh, you know, it's working essentially as a DAO uh, where you can vote uh, for the questions that you think should be asked in the next AMA or the next general question, or you know, be pr presented to the DeFi strategist for the next treasury vote. Um, and uh, as long as it gets more than six up votes um six likes uh then uh then that's something that we will look at as a team um so you know uh, thank you for everything you do aaron you're you're you're, uh, you're a hell of an asset here yeah i appreciate it yeah we're, we're doing our best to uh to build a community a real community here and and so you, you'll you'll be seeing that um you're, you've been seeing that and you will see it more to come in the future so uh, any suggestions you guys have to you can you can always reach out to me um, but yeah, I want to say congrats, Colin, on the doxing this week, and uh, I want to I want to see uh, some look some Colin stickers in the chats from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> my stupid face yeah 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 no it's um i'm happy i'm happy I'm that everyone's asking. <laughs> something that everyone was asking for and even after the death threats you know i, I had to make a decision personally on whether or not because i said i would and uh and i'm a man of my word and uh you know it, it's it, it was a, it was a tough decision it was a little nerve-wracking posting that but the response i've gotten from the face reveal uh i really appreciate it and I, I love you guys um, you know, I love the community and, and, you know, you guys have, uh, you guys have gone crazy. Feel free to meme up my face as much as you like. I do look at the memes and I think they're hilarious. Um, but yeah, uh, Excalibur, Yusuf, do you have anything you want to add? 
Yeah, recording should be up soon. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Thanks everybody for coming. And obviously, Aaron made out the the AMA channel. So, like I said, if you just put your question there, if it gets more than six upvotes, it'll automatically go in the next channel. So that makes it easier uh, for us to screen. So yeah, we'll see you guys next Thursday. We'll see you guys next Thursday. I, uh, I created a God mode form for those uh, that want to have feedback for us. Uh, it's in pins on the God mode channel. Perfect. So yeah, no, that's another thing that we're trying to do for God mode. Um, you know, we, uh, we heard some feedback today from the God mode people. And, uh, and so what we did is we created a Google form, uh, we've pinned it in the uh, God mode chat. And so, uh, if you have some feedback and some things that you'd like to talk about, uh, please fill out that form and we will be going through them as a team, all the responses. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for coming out to another Thursday AMA. Um, we're, we're about done here. I just want to say love you all. I uh, really appreciate everyone who has our back. Um, and, you know, I, I know it's a little bit of a nerve wracking time looking at the charts and looking at the price. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate again uh, that this is a transitionary time. Uh, we're seeing a lot of reward dumps from the reward changes. Um, you know, we just need to get through this and we're going to bounce back. Um, I just want to make sure everyone remembers, uh, you know, we were six weeks ago at 15 dollars and we balloon back up uh the same thing's gonna happen again guys we're, we're offering and we're adding so much utility to this ecosystem um that uh that we're gonna see a lot of people fomo in at a later time and uh you know everyone here is uh is an og and uh, and you know i i really appreciate you all we're all gonna make it and uh you know have a great night everyone i have to go uh ice my uh ice my uh ankle at this point uh it's, it's Larry. larry's here oh, oh. oh larry's here all right larry 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 finish this off there larry Hey guys, I'm here. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to say hi. I'm sorry. I get, they got away from me today. It was crazy for me. Uh, but uh, you know, it's nice. Uh, it's nice to hear you guys again. And uh, again, appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. And uh, Loki, it was nice to see your face. <laughs> uh, everybody thinks me and you are the same person, so hey man, we might be. <laughs> shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Nobody <Yeah>. knows, right? <laughs> well, look, man, I'm I'm so happy that you're here, Larry, because I'm honestly at this point it's a tradition that we have to finish out our AMAs with a Larry uh Larry cameo. So okay. it's, it's great to see you here, brother. Great to have those last little bits uh, in there. I, I hope you're doing well, my friend. Hope the day gets ahead of you here. And uh, have a great night, everybody. I, I got to go ice my ankle at this point. It's totally killing me. Um, so uh, have a great day.